Hello and welcome again as we look at yet another multiple choice question for IB chemistry. This one dealing with topic 10, organic chemistry, which means of course it applies to both SL and HL students. How many structural isomers of C6H14 exist? C6H14, it's hexane and structural isomers means you'll be thinking you've got to draw all of them out. And that's the way that you'll be able to answer the question. Bear in mind though, that you are given an average of 90 seconds to solve a question in the IB exam. SL students, you've got 45 minutes to do 30 multiple choice questions. HL students, you've got an hour to do 40 multiple choice questions. So that comes to the average of 90 seconds Per question. Of course, the good thing is some of those questions will be finished in 10, 15 seconds, allowing you to have about two and a half to three minutes to do some of the more difficult questions. But the question does arise, of course, how is a student supposed to go about solving this in the IB exam? Well, the first way, of course, is to look at the structure and draw all of the structural isomers. So let's look at that way. So here you have it, C6H14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, H14. It's an alkane obeying the general formula CnH2n plus 2. Now you should bear in mind that alkanes could take the form of ring structures, but once there is a ring structure for an alkane, then it no longer obeys the general formula CnH2n plus 2. And because this obeys the formula CnH2n plus 2, we can rule out all ring structures as possible isomers in this case. So you've got your first structure, C6H14, a straight line structure, hexane. Another structure could come by removing this CH3 from here and attaching it to one of the carbons. So let's do that. And that would give you this structure where you have one, two, three, four, five carbons in a straight chain. And on carbon two, you've got a CH3 group. That gives you two methyl pentane. Then what about if this CH3 gets attached here instead? Once again, you can count and see that you get C6H14. But what's the name of this structure now? one, two, three. Going from this side, you'll still get one, two, three. So the smallest number has to be maintained to describe where this methyl group is. Following the IUPAC naming system, this would be called three methyl pentane. That's the third isomer that we can identify. So with three isomers, we return again to look at our first isomer, hexane c 6 h 14. And then we think about removing two CH3s this time and attaching them to the same carbon. We're looking now for our fourth isomer. And here we'll get this structure with the longest straight chain being one, two, three, four. If we go this way, one, two, three, four, it's the longest continuous chain that we're looking for. We can get one, two, three, four this way as well. They all count as four carbons in the longest continuous chain that you can get. Now, whether we go this way, this way, or straight across, it's always going to be that this is carbon atom number two. Carbon atom number two contains two CH3 groups, giving the name of this structure as 2,2-dimethylbutane. That's the fourth isomer that we found. And here is the fifth and final structure that you can get. Again, removing two CH3s from C6 to get a continuous chain of four carbons, the name of this isomer would be 1, 2, 2, 3, dimethyl butane. And you've got your five isomers. Now, doing that under the pressure of the exam could be a bit of a challenge for most students. What you could do, of course, is to memorize and to know that C6H14 is going to have five structural isomers. 
And if you get C5H12, know that that's going to have three structural isomers. And if you get C4H10, know that that's going to have two structural isomers. But how do you remember all of this? Is there a formula? And the simple answer to that question is no. But there is a formula that we can actually apply for the purpose of IB exams. Because you're not going to get questions that go above C6H14. They might use C5H12. The short way is to either memorize the number of isomers, structural isomers for each one, or to memorize a simple formula. And that simple formula is this, 2 to the power of n minus 4 plus 1. The formula actually only applies up to c equals 7, which works fine for IB chemistry. So let's plug in the formula and see if it works. n equals 6, because there's 6 carbons, the number of carbons. 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 to the power of 2, 2 multiplied by 2 is 4, plus 1, 5. Answer to the question? 5. So we've solved the answer to this question in three ways. By rote learning that C6H14's got five isomers using a formula, or by simply trying to draw all of them out. Whichever works for you in the exam, it's fine. Of course, the real learning comes from being able to draw the five structural isomers. That's where you genuinely show your understanding of what is structural isomerism. Does this formula apply for if this is C4H10, let's say? That would be butane. Then it will be 4 minus 4, which is 0. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And there are, in fact, two isomers of butane. You can draw those two isomers of butane right now to see if it's true. And if you want, you can do the same for C5H12, pentane, and you can even experiment with heptane and see if you come up with 9 from the formula and 9 from trying to draw and name all of the structures. But if you go above heptane, this formula would break down.